Hi, welcome to Hikate's Crossing. Okay, so the new Mythic Tarot comes in this beautiful big box, um, of course, with the guidebook in it. So, of course, it's quite a decent guidebook. comes in a two-piece box, which is absolutely lovely, which I'll put to one side for the moment. Okay, so, like I said, it comes with this beautiful big guidebook. It's one of the best guidebooks I've seen for a long time. Really heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, let's have a look at what the book's about. Let's have a look. So it does talk a little bit about the um, the origins of the tarot cards, the mythic tarot, and then it's got the major arcana, then the minor arcana. With reading the cards, what tarot can and cannot do, make a relationship with the cards, laying out a spread. It's got the Celtic cross spread and the planetary spread. Conclusion, notes on your readings, further reading and acknowledgement. So there's quite a lot of um, reading to be done in this book. There's quite a lot in here. The black and white pictures in the book, but it does talk about the sim some of the symbols in the book, which is quite cool. It does talk a little bit about that. Um, it does have a good couple of pages. In the, yeah, it does got a good couple of pages for each of the major arcana. And the minor arcana as well. It's got a good page and a page and a bit. So quite a lot of information. So it's going to be a bit of a read for sure. Getting to know the stories, the legends, the deities, etc. of this deck. So that's going to take me a bit of time to read through it. So definitely recommend that um, to read the book. Definitely recommend that. Okay, there are borders, cards are quite nice, and it's quite nice, it's not, they're not um, white borders, don't mind the yellow, of course, purple background, quite neutral, nothing fancy, just got the symbols on the outside, it's more about the front of the cards, so let's have a look at the imagery. So I don't know what these are yet until I've had a look through the book. So it would be quite interesting to have a read through. I mean, I know some of them, but I'm not going to go into detail just yet until I read through the book and got the full thing. This is just about looking at the imagery. So, yeah. I love the Greek. As you can see, I've got into a few of the um, Greek cards, Greek decks, so hence why I've got the Mythic Tarot. Just want to have a read of something here. So we've attempted to restore some of the original simplicity and accessibility of the tarot cards by redesigning the deck in accordance with the images of the Greek gods, so beloved by Renaissance artists and writers, which form one of the primary underpinnings of Western culture. The Greek gods are not Greek gods are not the exclusive property of any particular esoteric school, religious doctrine, or spiritual path. A moral yet containing profound moral truth they predate and permeate our modern religious symbols as well as the art and literature of the whole of the western culture and they remain perhaps the most fundamental and comprehensive images to describe the many-sided and multicultural colored workings of the human psyche they're symbols of raw nature our own raw human nature with its deep ambivalence of body and spirit and its mutual contradictory drive towards self-realization and unconsciousness that's interesting Sorry, I just got distracted there.
right, so let's shuffle the deck and see what card. Oh, Eight of Cups popped in. So that's to me is about walking away of something. Walking away or walking into something new, walking away from something that no longer serves us well. So let's have a look at what Eight of Cups says. I'm going to read a little bit about this. Okay. The card of Eight of Cups portrays Sight. So, so, performing the final task that Aphrodite has given her, her journey into the underworld to bring back a pot of um, Persephone, uh, Persephone's beauty cream. Psyche is shown empty handed, descending the steps into the darkness of the underworld, her face set in sadness and resignation. Persephone, sorry, Persephone's beauty cream. Psyche is shown empty handed, descending the steps. Descending the steps into the darkness of the underworld, her face set in sadness and resignation because she realizes that she will probably not survive the journey. Behind her abandoned stand eight neatly stacked golden cups. The eight of cups represents the most difficult stage of Sykes' journey towards her goal of a relationship, the voluntary giving up of hope for the future. No living mortal can descend into Hades' realm, and as far as Psyche is concerned, this final task that Aphrodite has set must mean death. Nevertheless, she obeys the goddess, for she is loyal to her commitment to love. Thus, it is letting go of hope. All the tasks so miraculously performed, suggested by the eight neatly stacked cups, have been to no avail. She sees the situation as it truly is, that Aphrodite will never relent. And so in despair, she turns her back and walks away from her past hopes. The stage of relationship is one of the most painful because it means, or this stage of relationship is one of the most painful because it means that there is nothing further that can be done. Increased efforts avail nothing. We must give up and start again. Many people, when confronted with the dilemma reflected by the Eight of Cups, refuse to acknowledge the impasse and continue to plead, bully, bludgeon or blackmail the partner in the hope of a response, which is no longer possible in the present circumstances. The underworld, as we saw in the Major Arcana card of death, is a symbol of mourning and the requenching of control. It is the place of the death and transformation of our old attitudes. Therefore, when nothing furthers, we must be willing to let go, not as kind of deal to guarantee a future reconciliation, for that is not a true relinquishing, but because we can do nothing else. This is a bowing to what seems like fate and acceptance of an ending. Whatever happens, the letting go will change us because it is submission to that which is greater, not the willingness of the, not the willfulness of the partner, but the will of the divine. Imagine here as the great goddess of love. On a divinatory level, the Eight of Cups implies the necessity of giving something up. The truth of the situation must be faced. No further action will avail, and there is no way to go except to let go. Often this is accompanied by depression, for the underworld is a place of mourning. The future cannot be manipulated. We go empty-handed into the unknown. Ooh, that's a bit of a profound card for today. Okay, so that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care and blessed be.